Friends, in February 2018, I attended the World Conference on Information Technology, WCIT in Hyderabad. This prestigious event was being held in India for the very first time, bringing together over 3,000 visionaries and leaders of the IT industry from more than 80 countries. I remember listening intently to a keynote on creativity and thinking differently by Duncan Wardle, former Vice President of Innovation and Creativity for the Walt Disney Company, and he's now a global thought leader on the subject of innovation and creativity. In his engaging keynote, Duncan spoke about pushing yourself outside the comfort zone and doing things that give you butterflies in the stomach. Look underneath your chairs, he told this audience of roughly 3,000. Underneath one of them is a slip of paper. And if that slip of paper is underneath your chair, you will be the one who will come up on stage and join me for a karaoke session or speak on creativity or something like that, I can't exactly remember, but which involved going on stage in front of 3,000 people unprepared. This had everyone's hearts racing. I could hear whispers of, I hope it's not me, a visceral experience. Now, everybody had a good laugh after discovering that there were no slips of paper and no one had to go on stage in front of 3,000 unprepared. But Duncan did manage to give us all butterflies in the stomach. <laughs> you could now see people settling back in their comfort zones and their body language shifting to reflect this change. Now, pause this video and think of the first time someone called you to speak in public. And then let us know your experience in the comments. Chances are, you went through something similar. You probably had a more stronger reaction than just having butterflies in the stomach. S symptoms of the fear of public speaking include panic attacks, accompanied by excessive sweating and trembling limbs, increased pulse rate, dry mouth and stuttering voice, etc. According to a study, my friends, glossophobia, which is a weird name for the fear of public speaking, is one of the top 10 fears people have worldwide. Ahead of the fear of death itself. You heard that right. Some people would rather be dead than speak in public. What is it about public speaking that makes it so intimidating and yet so thrilling and rewarding at the same time? You might be feeling self-conscious, afraid of being judged or embarrassed on stage or a past negative experience might be haunting you. And yet, on the other side, on the other side of this fear is a tremendous opportunity to find your voice, to articulate your ideas, to engage and inspire and influence and lead. And here's the good news. You can overcome this fear and become an effective public speaker. You don't have to be a natural extrovert to do that. And no prescription pills involved. In case you're wondering, there are prescri prescription pills available to remove the fear of public speaking, right? So no prescription pills, just loads of practice. And I will present to you in this video, five effective tips to become a better and more effective public speaker. Let's begin. And make sure you watch this video to the end because I will recommend a highly effective video with one of the UK's top public speaking trainers on the end screen. Number one, nervousness is natural. That's my number one tip. Understand this, that nervousness, what you call as nervousness, is natural. This rush of nervous energy before speaking in public often gets a negative connotation. On the contrary, research has found that a bit of nervousness is rather a desirable thing. It shows that you care about the topic, about the presentation and the audience as a speaker. The only thing you need to work on is keeping this rush of emotions and heightened cardiovascular activity in the optimum zone. You see, in getting the best out of any microphone, you have to ensure that it is placed at the optimal distance from you. Place it too close and your voice can get clipped. Place it too far and it may, may pick up a lot of ambient sounds. Similarly, you need to train your mind to stay in the Goldilocks stress zone where you are alert and ready to go, but not overwhelmed or bored and tired. 
I share with you a pro tips, a few pro tips that I use personally. A few long deep breaths always help in relaxation. I always go do this before going on stage. Sometimes I do it with my audience as well. A few long deep breaths will help you settle down and be centered. Sometimes you will also find that you begin to settle on stage after starting your speech or keynote. So feel the fear, feel this heightened rush of emotions and step forward anyway and do it anyway. And you will see that the nerves will start to settle down once you're in control. Another effective strategy to channel the initial nervous energy is practice. Preparation and practice help you feel in control and they help you make a strong start. And as you settle, then you can be more spontaneous and more creative with your delivery or your interaction with the audience once you're on stage. This rush of energy that we call nervousness, it's actually a signal from your brain that the work that you're about to do is important and you want to give it your absolute best and that you care about the audience. Number two, know the target audience. Know your target audience. You see, my tailor has my measurements stored in his computer, but he insists on taking my measurements afresh every single time I visit. Sometimes I feel he's the only person who doesn't take me for granted. <laughs> Friends, it is critical to know and understand and measure your target audience and then customize and adapt your speech or your keynote, keeping in mind their expectations, their academic and professional background, their organizational, cultural, etc. I'm not implying that your aim should be to please them or tell them only what they want to hear. On the contrary, a good speaker will frequently dish out the cold, hard truth even if it's distasteful for the audience because they need to hear it. Now you can do that effectively only if you know your audience well. Who are these people that you're speaking to? What are their challenges? What are their aspirations and dreams? Their fears? Their cultural norms? Please remember, public speaking is not about you, the speaker. It is about them, the audience. I think this is worth repeating. Remember, public speaking is not about impressing other people with how good you are. It is about how much you care for your audience, right? It's not about impressing, it's about expressing. Here's a pro tip. I highly recommend asking uh, the event organizer about the target group. Whoever is organizing the event, talk to them. Ask questions about the target group. Right? How many speakers coming before you? What is the agenda? What is the theme of the conference? I even mingle with my target group, um, you know, during a break or something before I go on stage uh, for some very interesting last minute observations that help me break ice with the audience. Number three, be clear about the objective. Very important, be clear about the objective, about what do you want to accomplish with this group. One of the most critical components of planning your speech or presentation is narrowing down on the objective. If you read a lot, if you know a lot, you probably are going to pack in way too much and then your um, main focus should be on reducing, on selecting what does not qualify to be a part of that speech or presentation on making sure that you are precise and on target. Figuring out the purpose of your keynote or speech will help you decide the kind of material you want to compile and how you want to deliver it, right? You must have attended many of those functions where the chief gets started by appreciating the need to manage time and then proceeds to speak for 20 minutes instead of the allotted five, addressing a whole variety of things ranging from what he did in school to the need to be patriotic, etc. While people are thinking to themselves, when is he going to come to the point? <laughs> did he do it intentionally? Probably not. Well, he made this mistake. He did not keep the objective in mind. He didn't keep the main thing, the main thing. Take a deep breath in and remind yourself, I will Keep the main thing, the main thing. I think this is worth typing in the comment section. I will keep the main thing, the main thing. Our speaker digressed, 
right? Type in a yes if you've seen uh, or you've listened to speakers like that as well who digress and who don't have a clear idea about the objective of their speech. Now, let me also clarify, having said that, it's okay to digress a little bit to allow room for spontaneity, for improvisation, for humor, for audience engagement, etc. But the key is to find a way to connect it back to the main thing. Don't go too far out. So two things here, define the main thing and then keep the main thing the main thing. Here's another pro tip that I use personally. Take an A4 sheet of paper, sit down and write the five, the 10 or 15, depending upon how much time you have, the five, 10 or 15 things that you want your audience to be absolutely clear about when you're finished. Read this list frequently before you go on stage. Read it frequently even while you're preparing. It will serve as a compass that will help you stay on track and navigate towards your true north for that particular presentation. Number four, please remember, the audience has come to listen to you, not to see how cool your slide deck is. It's not a tech show. The audience has come to listen to you, not to see how cool your slides are or how beautiful the fonts are. So please, please, please stop doing these two things. Number one, putting all of your text on the slide deck and then reading from your slides. And number two, spending all your preparation time, your very important preparation time on beautifying your slide deck. Please remember, the audience is there for you. They want to hear your story. They want to know who you are. They want to feel your emotions and learn from your experiences. If you decide to read from slides instead of communicating and engaging and interacting with the audience, they will soon lose interest. If your slide deck has all the information that you need to share with the audience, you should perhaps just email it to everyone, thereby eliminating the need for you to travel in person. But since you've made the effort of showing up, make it count. Plus, who's going to remember what font you used a year from now? But they will remember whether you cared for your audience or not. Please remember, technology is only an enabler, an enhancer. It's you that matters. I love slides myself and I use them frequently in my keynotes. They help me keep my presentation on track. But the key is to use technology to add to your message. To use technology to add to your delivery, not to subtract from it, okay? So here's a pro tip. If you have a slide that needs to be read out verbatim, sometimes it's a quote or a paragraph some that you are referring to from another book, involve the audience and get them to read it aloud with you. So this way they feel involved. Number five, have a strong call to action at the conclusion of your speech. Most people find it difficult to absorb and act upon new information unless you break it down for them, unless you provide clear, simple, actionable points as a call to action. Research has shown that people remember the speaker and the contents of her speech more if she gives a memorable call to action. So while preparing for your speech, sit down with a pen and paper and write your answers to the following questions. What would you like your audience to do differently? I repeat, what would you like your audience to do differently once you're finished with this presentation? How would you like them to behave differently once they've heard your presentation? Then what are the first few simple steps that they can take as they step outside the auditorium? What are the first few simple steps they can take today to help them go in the direction that you want them to go towards? What resources are you providing them to help them stay on track? These questions, my friends, will help you craft a memorable and simple call to action as you close your speech or keynote um, presentation. You see, I've been a professional speaker for over 14 years now. And as you can imagine, I have a lot to say on the subject. In due course of time, we will create a course as well on effective public speaking skills soon. But until then, let me share a very powerful video with you that we made in collaboration with Maz Ifsel, one of the leading trainers in the UK on the subject of public speaking and finding your voice. This video is full of practical information 
on the subject of public speaking, on overcoming fear, stage fear, answering questions. And in addition, I want you to go to 49 minutes, 20 seconds, where Maz did a powerful visualization exercise with me that I highly, highly recommend. So, if your question is, can I become a better public speaker? The answer is an emphatic yes. 28th August, 1963, during the March on Washington, civil rights activist Martin Luther King Jr. delivered a powerful speech entitled, I Have a Dream. It is regarded as one of the most famous speeches in history. With over 250,000 civil rights activists in attendance, the speech had a massive impact, highlighting the importance of civil rights and Dr. King's vision of equality and liberty. Would you like to guess Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s grade in public speaking while he was earning his Bachelor of Divinity? English language, one of the greatest 20th century orators, received not one but two C's in public speaking, according to Professor Sarah Lewis of Harvard University. She wrote something compelling while tweeting out an image of Dr. King's transcript on Twitter. She said, I love that he received an A in preparation of the sermon and then those C's. Style can take time. Innovation awful looks like failure at first. I love those words. And I love the fact that Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. had an A in preparation of his sermon, right? Back in school and then two C's in delivery. Style can take time. And that, my friends, is the reason why I attended the WCIT 2018 in Hyderabad. And that is also the reason why I traveled to participate, not speak. I make sure that I travel to top conferences across the world to participate and listen to the experts, to soak in all the knowledge and information and the style and the content and the latest trends. So here's a little assignment for you that I'd like you to complete in the next 30 days. Find and use at least three. Find and use at least three opportunities to speak in public. I don't care if there are four or 40 people in your audience, whether it's in person or virtual. Find and use at least three opportunities to speak in public in the next 30 days and keep the five points mentioned in this video in your mind and take action. And then please do share your progress in the comments. And if you find there are other people who are struggling with their presentations and public speaking, please help them and lift somebody up. I'll leave you with the timeless wisdom of Mevlana Jalaluddin Muhammad Rumi who said, inside you, there is an artist that you don't know about. Inside you, there is an artist that you don't know about. Now go and discover that artist. Thanks for tuning in.